Hello and welcome back to KSP POV, where we play Kerbal Space Program in first person. So today we are going to focus on the ground contracts so that we're going to not be a space program, but just simply be a science program. So here you see we have very little science and our funding uh, could be better. We uh, don't have a lot, but we have enough to work with. And so today we're going to be exploiting one particular contract. Um, not this one, but we're going to pick this up anyways. Enter into space. Might as well have that. Um, the rest of those are going to be a little too specific. But the contract that we are going to be looking at is this one right here. Perform experiments around the KSC. So now, each part of the KSC is a different biome. So the administration is one, the runway is another, uh, the crawler way, and mission control, etc. Um, and this particular contract is repeatable, and it always asks you to do four different experiments in a handful of different biomes. Uh, like I mentioned in the last episode, uh, a lot of people like to make a rover that has a bunch of different science experiments, and just collect each biome one after the other, and uh, just get all the science you can get. But I like to uh, use this contract as kind of the... Uh, inspiration for which biomes to do which experiments in and the idea that uh, companies are contracting us to do certain things based on what they want and what they need uh, is a little more interesting to me so we're going to go ahead and do this and as this first contract requires we need a telemetry report two uh, Mr. Goo's in two different areas or one Mr. Goo in two different areas and a thermometer temperature scan temperature reading so we're gonna name this Cy rover one um, we don't have access to a lot of good rover parts at the time for the time being so this is just kind of uh, a structural beam that we're going to put in f on top of a rocket car so first off I have a few difficulties connecting uh, my pieces and so I just I think it's a bug and I switch over to that but I I do realize it's because of that antenna that is below you see here when I take it off and move it to a different spot I'm able to connect so we're just gonna throw on this tiny little beagle engine um, and we're gonna create ourselves a little stru uh, structural truss using these uh, pieces right here and just put on some tiny little wheels uh, to, to push it along We've been waiting on taking these contracts until we unlock these wheels because there's uh, it's, it's not fun trying to create a little rocket hopper to go between each biome and trying to do that in first person as well, uh, especially if we have a live Kerbal on board, which we are going to be having in this one. So yeah, until you unlock the aviation tabs that gives the, uh, the wings or the uh, wheel, excuse me. It's not possible. So we go ahead and we throw Bob in there. Uh, he's a scientist after all. Um, Jeb is a little unhappy that he doesn't get to pilot the very first manned craft, but uh, he's just going to have to live with that. So at the last minute, we decide th to throw on some rear-facing engines, uh, air-breathing jet engines. Um, because we want a way to do an emergency stop in case we build up too much speed on this thing. But, uh, that, it proves to be more of a waste than, uh, than a help. So here we are on the launch pen. Here's our, uh, little creation. It's still day one of our program. Uh, mere hours ago, we launched our very first vessel. So now what I'm using here is uh, another one of Kurt Gutt's mods that has uh, recently hit the uh, airwaves. And this is the external command pod, um, external command seat IVA mod, uh, kind of a reskin of it. There was uh, no IVA mod in the original uh, piece, and so by adding this you add a lot more functionality to the seat. This is the um, orbital craft. The, this is the lander can or the lander seat version of this uh, mod. It comes with two 
different skins, one for a lander and one for a plane. And we're going to use the plane one uh, later in the episode as more of our standard one. This has a lot of information, but a lot of it isn't really useful to us, such as our surface speed um, isn't, isn't in a low enough gauge for it because this is expecting you to be going at thousands of meters per second as opposed to 10 meters per second. But I do love the openness of this cockpit, the, the ability to look all around you. It's very good. So now Bob uh, is not used to driving. He's no pilot after all. And so he turns the speed on a little too much, leaves the engine on for far too long. And so he's gathering too much speed. So he starts to panic and he hits the uh, rear facing engines, but of course forgets to turn them off because they uh, forgets that they take a little bit to turn off. So then he starts losing control of the craft. Unhappy with this, he demands that they, uh, the engineers of the KC put his craft back to the launch pad, and he's going to try this again, but a little more cautiously this time. Now, I do want to say, um... The frame rate in this episode is uh, leaves a bit to be desired. Um, between this episode and the next episode, I did a lot of uh, adjusting to the settings and to my recording settings and all this to try to strike a nice balance um, between visibility and quality of of what you're looking at. And so, it is a little bit rough in certain parts in this episode. Uh, and for that, I apologize. Give you a, a pre-apology. But um, in the next episode, it shall be fixed, and the quality ends up looking quite, uh, quite a lot better. So, appreciate uh, sticking around for that. But here we are. We're going to leave the launch pad once again and just kind of ease our way forward, just kicking on the throttle ever so gently. Nice clear day out with the KSC. And here we are entering the crawler way. And we do have some science to do for there. So we go ahead and hit that action group. And we uh, go ahead and keep that science because we're going to be recovering the vessel. And see, uh, the speedometer is uh, equipped for much higher speeds than what we're going right now. So it's a little hard to use in that aspect. And we're slowing down a little bit because we've just been riding that momentum that we had. So we kick on our engines again a little bit just to keep ourselves moving forward. And our wheels uh, aren't great. Our center of mass is uh, pretty low and wants us to flip over pretty, pretty easily. So we have to take our turns very slightly. Just tapping on the throttle just to keep ourselves going forward, but uh, not too fast. Our next stop is the mission control building. This little shack on the right. So we went ahead and ran that experiment, and that successfully uh, was saved into the, the database. Um, uh, Bob is noticing the holes in the side of the space plane hangar and wonders uh, what exactly happened there since uh, it was a perfectly fine building when they inherited the place earlier that morning. What exactly went on in the creation of this rover that, they're, that uh, he's riding this rocket car? I 
right next biome is the runway. So just kind of get ourselves up. And it's easiest to come through from the spice plane hangar. Um, so you don't have to deal with the hill required to climb onto the runway. There's just this nice flat entrance right here. So I wait until I'm on the actual dirt itself. And I run that experiment. Now it's about this time that I remember that there was this another version of this IVA, uh, a plain version. So I go ahead and clicked into that, but I experienced a fun little bug where my Kerbal was on the front of the craft anyways. So I go back into the lander can version of it, um, and uh, my craft starts acting a little funky and uh, whipping back and forth. And my computer starts making a lot of noise. And then uh, shortly after looking at my speed here, I'm going to go ahead and freeze and uh, my game will crash. So sadly, this whole mission uh, has been a wash and we're going to have to restart that from scratch. But since I'm going to start again, I'm going to take a few of the things that I learned from that and just adjust it. So first off, we are getting rid of those because those are useless. And we're going to kind of lower or uh, even out our center of gravity by extending out uh, our wheels to a wider stance. There we go. And we don't need that much fuel, so we're just going to pack this tiny little tank. We don't need that much thrust, so we're going to limit the thrust. And uh, overall, it still has everything it needs. I give myself a little bit taller of a viewpoint. And this is the version 2 of our rocket car. Once again, I do the lander can version. I did have to repeat this mission, so I, I completed all those uh, science experiments that we did beforehand. But I just went ahead and skipped through, forward through the footage. So you didn't have to see that twice. We are going to be seeing a lot of the same things multiple times. I mean, we are going to be grinding a lot of uh, of these, ex performing the experiments around the KSC contracts in this episode. That's why it is uh, titled the way that it is. Because uh, Bob is about to do some serious grinding. But anyways, we're back to where we needed to be. Um, we have one more experiment to run, and that is at the administration building. So we're just going to come on here. We're going to climb this little hill right here. Uh, not always uh, the safest of tasks. Sometimes you can break the front of your rover that way. But thankfully, this design was able to handle it. I flip my chair around, just kind of look at all my experiments, and we slowly crash into the side of the administration building. I'm sure the Kerbal in there in whichever office that is uh, had quite a fright. Well, there we are. We got uh, about 24 science from that. Um, we got about 30,000 funds. So quite lucrative for just a little bit of work. So we go in here and we had uh, Space Exploration Unlocked, which gave us the Provodobodyne Rove Mate, and that is going to be uh, what our rover, our science rover, is going to be made out of from here, here on out. We are no longer going to be dealing in rocket cars. They're too unstable, too unpredictable, uh, too hard to control, and Bob was very adamant about this, and so he pushed forward for this science to be made. So we go ahead and we take that external command seat and we put it on the probodobodyne. We extend out so it's uh, two long, two bodies long. And it's got two uh, sets of wheels in the back for extra push. We go ahead and we name our action groups uh, according to the science experiment uh, that we are going to run in what order that we're going to run them in. We throw some lights on here. You know, we don't really need them in the beginning but they will be useful down the road and we go ahead and 
load it up with the experiments that we need. So we set up our action groups and we put on a communitron just in case we need to control it remotely or if we need to send out experiments. So once again, we load up Bob Kerman on that. We put him on the launch pad because, and we put him on the launch pad because it's the quickest way to get to the KSC. Uh, it's quicker than loading up on the runway. So now that we're using electric power, all we have to do is press forward. Uh, but nobody told Bob that since the launch pad had been upgraded, uh, there's a big old gap in the center of it. So he got quite the fright thinking that he was going to have to lift this thing up and bring it back. So once again, uh, we are in the same external command seat. However, we are now in the plane version of it, which has a much smaller gauge for the speedometer. So it's a little easier to see exactly how fast we're going. And for this round, we decided to install parallax to get a little bit of interesting scatter. But um, it was quite taxing on the my system. As you can see, it uh, has some stuttering. So uh, we end up only using it during this particular uh, experiments on the KSC contract. They may or may not make appearances here and there later on, uh, depending on the mission. Certain times I feel that the parallax scatter, just even a little bit of it, uh, makes a huge difference in the world that, uh, that we play in. So here we are, doing more science experiments for the VAB. And this uh, rover is much easier to drive around. It's easy to stop. It's easy to uh, maneuver and get get around places that it needs to go. It's easier to come to a full stop uh, as it doesn't have as much power to for its brakes to work against. And it has that full, uh, I'd say, 180 degree view of the world you get to see to your left and to your right all the way uh, above you it's very nice it was very relaxing um, doing these missions driving around the KSC in this uh, particular cockpit so now we're gonna head to the space plane hangar and I believe that uh, no, we still have another one to go to. We have to go to the KSC, which is uh, this tiny little space in between the VAB and the astronaut complex. This little triangle that I'm entering right here. So there we go. We did our... Uh, our contracts. This is going to be our workhorse rover for the, the rest of the episode. Uh, the Cy Rover 2. Uh, all we're going to do is just load it up with different experiments based on which contract we are taking. So yeah, so we got 106 science um, based on those uh, previous contracts that we've done. And like I said before, this uh, is repeatable. So we just come on here come on back to the mission control and pick it up again and start the process all over again so real fast I'm just going to show you that uh, this rover can be moved around it has plenty of room so even at a 30 part limit uh, you can uh, adjust it to fit your needs and so we have it out on the launch pad so now the next eight missions run very much the same um, basically drive to a different part of the KSC and uh, run the experiment appropriate so I'm going to combine the next eight missions into this four panel view here um, you can either pick your favorite one and just kind of watch it as it goes through or watch whichever one catches your eye 
but I wanted to include how much grinding we did uh, in this in this day of Bob's, and uh, just how much you can get from from the all the different experiments you can do. And uh, I thought it'd be it'd be kind of a waste to just have fades all over the place, just fading from here to from each experiment to each experiment. Uh, I think part of the fun of doing this is the the driving around the KSC and uh, what you can kind of look at. And so uh, I decided to just keep them fully uncut. But like I said, uh, there's a lot of experiments, uh, a lot of contracts to be run. We ended up making somewhere in the range of 400... 460,000 uh, Kerbal credits, Kerbal bucks, whatever whatever denomination of money that they have. We made uh, 460,000 of it just uh, doing these contracts. And, you know, we're getting science that we could have run anyways. And uh, sure, it takes us longer to do it. We have to, you know, redesign the craft. We have to pay for the craft to be created and uh, drive it around to all the different areas and we have to do it in a very kind of inefficient way but but it pays and uh, in early career mode that's the best way to do it sometimes uh, early career mode you you end up doing uh, part testing and that's how you make your money just testing after testing part after part after part but I like in uh, in some of my playthroughs, I like to do my grinding in a more scientific manner. So now the uh, rovers are all reaching their final destination, doing their final bits of experiments, and uh, being brought home. As you can see, the day went on uh, through each of them. And so now for the last four experiments, uh, the sun is setting, and the bottom two, it is uh, almost gone. quite beautiful and having uh, having the volumetric clouds uh, adds a little bit of color to the sunsets as well and the fact that the the light reflects off of them so it makes for a very peaceful and immersive environment So Bob's getting pretty tired um, as the day presses on, uh, doing this over and over again. This whole episode, I had about 10 hours worth of footage, so uh, been doing this uh, quite a bit. Even I was getting a little tired of it, but I knew that by the end of uh, by the end of the day, we would have enough science to get all the parts that we needed for the next next set of things that we're going to be doing. And we're just getting the last set of experiments done. Each of the uh, rovers are on their last one. The bottom two, I like the idea that they kept coming back to the administration. Like Bob kept begging them, like, please, can I be done? Have I have I done enough experiments? Look at this. The moon is up. Valentina's gone home. Bill has gone home. Jeb is sticking around watching me. He uh, he likes. Reveling in my misery, I guess. So we come back to the KSC. And, um... We have a bunch of science to spend. Uh, we actually had more than that. We unlocked a few things along our way. Like general construction and enhanced survivability. Uh, 
However, we, we don't have that footage currently. But so we're going to come in here and we're going to unlock the fuel systems. That is a huge thing and that's a huge step forward for our program. We're going to be able to do a lot more with our crafts having that unlocked. So very happy about that. And uh, it's it's nice when, when grinding pays off when you can uh, get yourself a little bit uh, steps ahead of the curve just by doing some hard work. So we're gonna grab another KSC uh, experiments group, but we're actually going to just do one big old grab bag of science. We're going to aim for the water. We don't have uh, very much water science, and so if uh, if Bob can get this done, just get ourselves uh, just an extra little bit so we can unlock one more thing, then uh, he'll have done a good job and he can come on home. So we take every single science experiment we have, uh, minus the uh, camera, but we're going to throw that on after the fact. Um, there we go. There's the camera. Onboard camera. And uh, yeah, so we just take every science experiment we have, and we're going to get them to drive it into the water and collect the, the science from that. We have a nice little shot of the moon as we come up, and he sees the message written by the... Uh, administration saying do this and you can go home so excitedly he goes to drive uh, to bring himself down the edge um, he knows there's a gap in the middle but he did not uh, pay attention to how big of a gap there was and drove clear right off it frustrated he gets the engineers to line him up once more and uh, I'm gonna try again He gets a little stuck in the beginning. He's not sure on what, but he uh, backs it up and maneuvers out of the way. But then also to his frustration, the edges of the platform seem to be a little bit higher than normal. Whereas before he was able to get over them with ease, and now no matter where he turns and how hard he thrusts at it, he seems to be stuck on these corners. The rest of the engineers are just laughing. Uh, he says it's not funny he's been here for 18 hours today doing science and he finds that uh, being blocked the, at the very end of it was very unsatisfactory so he gets out of his rover and turns around to go have some words with those engineers and he demands that they build this rover outside of that launch pad Now he is on his way. He is cranking the engine as hard as it can, pushing these wheels as fast as they can to cover the distance. Hits the sand and he's excited, thinking he's going to be there at any moment. He looks over at the buttons, dreaming of the time where he can kick his feet off and relax his, uh, his weary head. And go to sleep. The beach is always farther than it seems. No real reference to how close he's getting to it, except by the mountains moving to his right. Because with this last little stretch of science, we can take the next steps uh, and do the next phase of our program and turn our eyes to the skies and then eventually to the stars themselves. There's Minmus. And he starts to pitch downhill even farther. Shouldn't be long now. Bob starts to get a little nervous as he picks up speed. Even Jeb is uh, shifting in his seat as he's watching, watching Bob go down at such a rapid pace.
He takes a look to his right when he sees the water come up. And that is the last thing that he remembers before blacking out. When he comes to, he, uh, he sees that he's still in control of the craft. And thankfully, not in too deep of a water. The lights had shut down, so he kicks them back on so he can see what he's, what he's doing. And with a breath, he flips the switch so he can do the science that they required back home. Uh, and in his hurry, he accidentally resets the experiments. So with a panicked breath, he goes and tries to flip the switch again, hoping that the experiments would run a second time. And this they do, and this time he keeps all of them. And with a weary eye, he says goodbye to the moon, uh, calls for the craft rescue, and uh, gets ready to take a well-deserved break. Well, everyone, that's where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more KSP POV. If you did, please consider giving me a like, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Wait. What is this? A flea booster on the launch pad. And Jeb is in the driver's seat? Jeb, Jeb what are you, you're not cleared for flight. This, this command pod is not ready for it. Jeb, you stop setting those systems. You, you can't fly this thing. There's no reaction wheel on this. Yeah, I know. I, I told him that. I told him that. Um, Jeb, uh, I, I, I know you think this is funny, but uh, you can't. I know you've been waiting. Just be a little more patient. We'll get you in a cockpit soon. I promise. Jeb, don't you hit that ignition button. Jeb, I'm... We're gonna have to talk about this in your performance review. I know you want to get to space, but we have protocols. Yeah. Can't control a, a runaway rocket, now can ya? I'm starting to see that that's a bad idea now, isn't it? It's only rocket science. <sighs> Jim, what are we gonna do with you? He made it. I didn't think he was gonna make it. Well, I mean, look at that guy. He's so happy. Can we, can we really deny him any longer? He just wants to fly. I mean, what's the harm in indulging him a little bit, you know? <laughs> Kerbals are just so bouncy. You know what, Jeb? You convinced me. We're gonna put you in the air. In the next episode.